Welcome back. Remember, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Michelle Shira, and we have a conversation that is still ongoing, and we are asking you, how exactly are you working at home? Uh, you can find that question on our Facebook page. That is at Y254 channel. Right now, I am uh, don't know if I should say I'm really, really, really happy or excited because I was looking forward to talk to you, uh, to our guests. Come here, guests. Look at me here talking to you. See if you've already <laughs> introduced you to my guests. So we, you and I understand that the beauty industry in Kenya is the most, most uh, lucrative when it comes to business. So it is valued over 100 billion shillings uh, in, a, in a very less than a decade. So it's a business venture that every young person can get into it and uh, not really gambling, but you can, you can assure yourself that you're going to get something out of it. So 100 billion estimation and uh, quite much more into that considering that um, we have people and young people who are very conscious on how they look. Team millennials all over so in social media handles, Instagram, wanting to look fly and on sports. And to me, today we are talking about the makeup artistry by none other than Calvin Trevor. So, Calvin. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so we much. We waited for you. We've been here waiting for you. Oh, it's my pleasure. No worries. <laughs> yes. So, Kevin, you can take this time and uh, introduce yourself properly if I've missed out on anything that uh, Kevin Trevor does. Oh, okay. My name is Kelvin Trevor. Mm -hmm. I'm a celebrity makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently based at Machakos, but I'm a freelance makeup artist. Let me just start by this. Uh, just for the viewers who have been waiting for this. Okay. Uh, all the way from Machakos this morning. Yes. Wow. yes. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's much pleasure. So, how did Kelvin get into the makeup industry? Well, Kelvin started makeup actually as a peer, as a personal assistant at a beauty shop. Oh, right. I remember it was way back in 2018 after I was done with my high school studies in 2017. Okay. So I just walked into this beauty store. I didn't know anything about makeup artistry. Then I just requested for a job. Mm -hmm. And that is how my makeup career began. Okay. So for, uh, for someone who is seated at home and has interest in makeup, a couple of us watch way too many YouTube tutorials yeah. on makeup. So where did the love come from? Like, uh, as, a, as a young man, where, where did the love for makeup come from? Actually, I can say that it started way back as fast as I was a peer, mm -hmm. what I could do actually during the closing hours of the shop, I would actually remain behind mm -hmm. and start drawing my eyebrows. That's how everything started out. Mm -hmm. And that is how my interest grew in more and more. Mm -hmm until to a point that I was like, yes, this is something that I should be doing. Mm -hmm. This is something that I should take on. So I decided to quit the job mm -hmm. and begin my own brand, which is Kelvin Trevor. Mm -hmm. And slowly by slowly, that's how I grew, actually, because I actually started at Makeup by Rose, because mm -hmm. I highly thank her, because she took me in and gave me a one month free training sponsorship. Oh, nice. So you moved from being a PA uh, you, now you have moved to uh, actually seeking uh, professional other skills on things that you have missed out on. How did it work to meet up with, uh, what's her name again? Makeup by Rose. Makeup by Rose. Yes. Okay, so how did that come by? So actually I remember this this point mm -hmm. as I was still in my early stages of building my brand. Oh, right. There's this time I posted at a group in, in, a, in a Facebook account. And the bashment and the negativity was extremely real. Why well, was there bashment and negativity? Or oh, is it because you're a guy? Yes, majorly because I was a guy mm -hmm. and I had makeup on at that time. Mm -hmm. And majorly also because my skills are not yet developed that much. Mm -hmm. So the kind of negativity from people, like the post within a few hours, they driven a lot of traffic in the group. Okay. So actually the group admin or moderator, I can't quite mm -hmm. recall, mm -hmm. She connected me with Makeup by Rose, mm -hmm. and that is how Makeup by Rose took me in mm -hmm. and gave me a one month free sponsorship training. And that is how I actually got to perfect my skills. Yes, all right. So then there was bashing because they say, uh, no good, bad, pu bad, good publicity, bad, good uh, publicity is still good, it's still publicity and uh, showcasing whatever you have as a business person. So here you are. Yes. Uh, at uh, Makeup by Rose. Yes. And uh, getting your skills and everything. So do you feel like that, at, at that position, you builded your confidence to start something of your own? 
actually can say yes because at that time I came to realize there's a lot I had not yet learned. Mm -hmm. There's a lot I had actually to perfect on. The number one key thing was my confidence also mm -hmm. in terms of approaching the customers because I don't want to say that women are actually complicated, but you might find some clients who are really, really complicated. Mm -hmm. And they don't give you a hard time, just that they want perfection. Okay. Yes. Uh, speaking about, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the, that would be the right word, but in the aspect of uh, if a client is not, has their own vision of what uh, they want their makeup to look like, and being a position whereby it does not uh, come out, as as I wanted, because I've been in that situation where I wanted a makeup in a certain way, then you didn't uh, occur the, the like the way I envisioned it. Yes. So how would you, how do you deal with that when a client clientele yes. comes to you with a vision of how they want to look in terms of their makeup, and then uh, probably you didn't achieve their vision? How do you deal with that situation? So actually, about that, mm -hmm. it's whereby, like for example. You're my client today. Yes. So you bring to me a photo, mm -hmm. telling me I want to look exactly like mm -hmm. this lady on this photo. Mm -hmm. So one thing, I'll break it down to you. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, at times, for the eyeshadow, let's okay. start from there. From the eyeshadow, some colors actually do not work so well on melanin skins. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because some eyeshadows really look great on lighter skins. But for dark people, it doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you bring me a shade of eyeshadow, probably, let's say, a brighter gold of it, and your skin is a bit too melanin for it, I'll, bring, I'll break it down to you to tell you that mm -hmm. this and this will not work well on you. So probably you can try this and this. Okay. Yes. Uh, still on the eyeshadow, uh, different occasions. So let's look at uh, a young lady or just a lady who's going out for dinner. Yes. And then we have uh, like a, a daytime ev event. So what is the ideal uh, makeup for, you know, during the day and if you're going out for dinner with a couple of friends or even your loved ones? So actually during the day, your makeup should actually be toned down. Mm -hmm. That includes toned down eyes and toned down lips. What? Because you don't want to bring that aspect of everyone she's looking at you. Oh my God, look at that lady. But what, girl, what if I want attention? You know, like it's during the day, I want everyone to be looking at my eyes poppy. You know, like what if I want Okay, attention? if you want attention during the day, just go for dramatic lashes. That can uh -huh. work so well for you. Oh, what? Okay. Yes. Right. Because when you look at the glowing colors, they work mm -hmm. so well at night. Mm -hmm. Because you might be going to a dinner party or an event at a club and the lighting is a bit too dim, the lighting is not that bright, so that's why you can go well. Hmm. Uh, now I see your point, now I see yes. your point. Remember you can follow us on our social media, on our social handles, that is as simple as at Y254 channel, at Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. We have a question on Facebook and we are asking you, how exactly are you finding the aspect of just working at home? Head to our Facebook page at Y254 channel and leave your comment there. We love to have a conversation with you. So now here we are as a client. How do you build? Uh, how do you build your clientele? Well, at times it's tricky because mm -hmm. mostly it might depend on referrals okay. at times because okay, social media these days, photos is too much editing. So mm. by the time a client actually believes that. That is your work. Others have a lot of doubt in it. All right. So when it comes to, because if I'm going for a photo shoot, or yes. if it's for a magazine, or uh, just for my social um, media handles, yes. after I go for makeup and I'm going for a photo shoot, of course there's a bit of editing. Yes, Do yes. you feel like that, uh, that, that affects your part of job? Because cause if I'm looking as a client, I'm looking at the work I'm seeing from a particular photo, and I want exactly that, but it's been... Uh, uh, I don't know if it's affected. Yeah, it's been affected during the editing of the videos, of the pictures. So do you feel like that uh, interferes with, uh, like, a client wanting a specific uh, look from a picture, and yet it was edited? I can actually say that it's both positive and negative. Okay. Because on the positive side of it, it brings that full aspect of natural beauty and full aspect of the makeup on it. Okay. On the negative side of mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. we well believe that 
despite not everyone has mm -hmm. that clear skin, not mm -hmm. everyone has that perfect, flawless skin. You understand mm -hmm. me? So the moment that you bring to me a photo of someone with a very flawless skin, mm -hmm. and on your side, which, okay, it's not a bad thing, but you have a bit of an acne. Okay. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And you expect to look like exactly like that person. Mm -hmm. So that's actually where the mm -hmm. issue comes in. All right. Uh, I would like to ask the question, like uh, I've seen a comment here. So um, this is someone who is asking a question. Uh, she's asking, uh, what in your opinion is the most important quality in a makeup artist? Most important quality, I would say, is humility. Okay. Because in this industry, you meet so many people, mm -hmm. so many people of diverse cultures mm -hmm. and diverse beliefs. Mm -hmm. So what depends mostly is how you approach a client. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm, if I'm humble enough as I approach you, mm -hmm. that is the same way that you'll still take me as a makeup mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. But if I approach you rudely, and if I don't make, interact with you during the process, like I only tell you, sit there, Relax, now let me do the work. For me, I have the interaction with the client. Okay. This is that interaction, like after we, we've done in every step. Let's say it's your first time doing mm -hmm. makeup with me. So as you interact on every step, mm -hmm. like I take you through every step to see if you're comfortable with that. Okay. Because on my side, there's the way like, I like my eyebrows to oh, be yeah, like conversing just to get the ideal yes. look there that your client wants yes i would like to find out how you keep up with the trends because when it comes to makeup every single day on youtube uh, uh tutorials instagram we see different artistry when it comes to makeup how do you keep up with the trends i would say makeup it's all about playing around with it mm -hmm. you don't have to be like somebody else you don't have to do makeup like somebody else okay. just find that unique thing in you mm -hmm. and do it as yourself mm -hmm. Because the moment that you'll do it like somebody else, to be like, you've not yet created anything in your mind. Mm. Like if I, for example, there's makeup artist in Nairobi that I follow too much, and I really look up to him, Dennis Karuri. Mm. I know Dennis, Dennis is all about flamboyant on the, uh, on yes. the colors. Yes, yeah. true. So actually, as I, as I look through his Instagram page, one thing that I actually say is, okay, he tried this, color of eyeshadow mm -hmm. then why don't I try another color almost resembling to the same one mm -hmm. because the same the same time I'll do it the same way he has mm -hmm. done it I won't have created anything in my mind so you just uh, look at what someone else has done and bring out the creativity aspect of you and just incorporating what yes. you saw yes okay let's head to your Instagram uh, mm -hmm. page and see what uh, you got for us in terms of uh, makeup uh, so Instagram is Kelvin underscore Trevor. You have Facebook page? Yes, Facebook page is Makeup Done by Kevo. Ah, yes. Makeup Done by Kevo. So it's Makeup by Kevo. Makeup Done by Kevo. Actually, the Makeup by Kevo was actually uh -huh. taken by somebody else. All right. So I decided to input the glam in it. All right. Yes. So I see you there, all glammed up. Thank you. Okay, I love your eyebrows. So uh, you, as you talked earlier, because I see your eyebrows are quite different from uh, the ladies. Yes. Uh, so what do we call uh, this particular eyebrow, the one that you've done and uh, what she has on? So for me, actually, I don't have like a particular name for every eyebrow. Okay. What I actually follow, mm -hmm. it's your, your lining of the eyebrows themselves. Oh, okay. I actually okay. follow how naturally your eyebrows look like. You don't go with shapes? Like if you ask a client, like, I want this particular uh, shape of eyebrow? And no, for me, actually, I don't go with shapes okay. because we all we depend on the face structure of yourself. Oh, why? We don't want to give you an eyebrow shape mm -hmm. that will make you look, mm -hmm. that will end up making you look not your natural face. Like if you would see my eyebrow on this side, mm -hmm. it actually defines my face uh, clearly. Speaking about eyebrows on this side and the other side, uh, most ladies uh, struggle with making your eyebrows look like sisters, like they look the same. It's always a struggle. Yes. So how do you curve that? How do you ensure like that they look the same, like your eyebrows? Um, actually, eyebrows never look the same. They're mm -hmm. never sisters. They're actually distant cousins, you say so. <laughs> so what you actually do, mm -hmm. what I actually do is we perfect every eyebrow on its own. Oh, why? Wow. You understand me? Okay. Every eyebrow, I perfect it on its own. Okay. Just that after I'm done with this eyebrow, I'm sure that it's perfected on its own mm -hmm. and I'm 
as I go to the next eyebrow, mm -hmm. I perfect it on its own. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. So you do um, makeup for weddings. Uh, what are some of the events that you have covered in terms of uh, makeup? Actually, I've covered fashion runways. Mm -hmm. I've covered photo shoots, mm -hmm. weddings. Yeah, we can see that. We can see that. Yes, mm -hmm. I've, I've also, I'm also a product review. All right. Yeah, I actually get products from different cosmetic shops and I do reviews. Oh, that means if a client, because uh, we have different uh, skin tones and we have the oily face and yes. the dry face. So you can actually offer a consultation on that? Yes, yes, true. Okay, all right. So is this part of a, was this a set, a film set? Because I see a lady there. No, actually she was going to a photo shoot. All right. So I was doing a makeup on set mm -hmm. because I prefer makeup for photo shoot mm -hmm. to be on set. Okay. Just that it looks fresh. You understand me? Oh, why? Yes. So how does the prices vary? Do they vary, like, if I'm going for a photo shoot, no, no necessarily like that. Because you talked earlier and you mentioned that you do film, set film um, makeup. Yes. So does it vary with the normal makeup? Yeah, set film varies a bit mm -hmm. because in a set film you're given you're given the, actually the script on it. Mm -hmm. So you have to read through mm -hmm. the script and understand the character mm -hmm. of the person. So actually what I usually, I usually use to, ma to differentiate the different characters mm -hmm. is actually the eyeshadow and the lipstick part. Mm -hmm. Because if someone is that, okay, let's, let's say you're given a character of a simple girl mm -hmm. who is not yet, he's not yet that much into makeup or just I actually love to follow a certain, a certain series on a certain television. Mm -hmm. And actually, I, I love how the makeup is done because different characters are different, are given different looks no. to match with their personality. Definitely. Yes. Okay, so um, still looking at, uh, <laughs> looking at uh, makeup by Kevu, uh, oh, weddings, uh, yes. still the weddings and bridals. So you have, Let's talk about weddings. Yes. Caught my eye. So if I'm, uh, you know, the, the girl, the main girl, yes. and then her, br uh, her bridles and everything else. So uh, what would you advise any lady who uh, is looking forward to the big day and in the, in the makeup? Uh, because I feel as, as ladies, we tend to always want things to be perfect, you yes. know. The, with my girls, my bridles. So what will be your advice before you... Uh, make a date with your makeup artist. What will be your advice for that lady who is looking forward to a big day uh, and wants everything to be perfect? Okay, for me, I would advise you to actually make a booking earlier. Okay. Consult a makeup artist earlier. Mm -hmm. Like about three months to your wedding. Mm -hmm. Because on my side, I actually get mm -hmm. calls. Mm -hmm. Like the wedding is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You understand me? The wedding is actually tomorrow and you're calling me at around 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. and you're telling me like, I need you to do my makeup. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I will humbly decline. Reason being, okay. I had not yet prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Understand me? Mm -hmm. Because I might, not, I might not perfectly understand the kind of look you wanted on your day. Yeah. You understand me? And I don't, I don't want to be that makeup artist who just comes, does magic on your face <laughs> without even consulting you. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you might get, well, you might get positive remarks, mm. you might get, negative remarks, you never know. So uh, book earlier, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation of what exactly you want. Yes, true. So I would like to find out any mistakes that you have done during your duties and how did you cover that? <laughs> any mistakes I've done? Yes. Wow. I would say that many. <laughs> so actually, um, in what perspective? If I would in terms ask? of your work, like in terms of makeup? In terms of why? Yeah, let's look at a couple of mistakes. A couple of mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's a time I went to a wedding, mm -hmm. actually it was last year. And I, I, I was given actually, I can't say it was my mistake mas mm -hmm. personally, but I can take it as a blame to myself because mm -hmm. I was told the number of bridesmaids were actually five. Okay. So in my head, mm -hmm. I'd actually cut it mm -hmm. five lashes. Mm -hmm. Actually to reach on the wedding day and actually find that they were more than five. Oh no. So actually I can take it as a blame on myself because okay. as a makeup artist, you should always carry something extra, extra okay. along the way you didn't because inquire, a, you didn't inquire no i didn't inquire that mm. was the mistake that okay. i did too much yes all right so how do you ensure like your signature style is quite different from other makeup artists that creates a niche for you 
Well, for me, I've actually branded myself more with makeup, applying makeup on myself. Mm -hmm. That is how actually, I can say mm -hmm. that is how my brand actually mm -hmm. started, as I told you before on the Facebook post that I, that I did. Okay. So I can say that is the thing that has actually built my brand. Mm. And actually, most of the occasions that I, I do attend and mm -hmm. most of the occasions that I do grace, mm -hmm. I actually attend them with full glam makeup on. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Let's wind up, right, and find yes. out how do you ensure that you stay focused in terms of uh, the business side and the artistry. Like, you, you ensure, like, even if it's art, I'm making money out of this. Well, one thing I love doing is I say that makeup artistry is about having fun. Mm -hmm. But alongside having fun, make sure that this is my main hustle on it so actually despite us having fun while we're doing the magic on it also be sure that when it comes to payment terms that's why i prefer payments before oh prior yeah prior to the to the day okay because at that point i'll be sure like okay yes i will go and do makeup on this client but actually she won't like tell me eh, it's not I just talking to when you can attack her. So Skunipi, you understand? I get you. Yeah, so actually to avoid all that because actually and I went to that at one time. Mm -hmm. It was actually a client. I need her makeup. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, uh uh, I just talking to when you can attack her eyebrow upana. Quiv na kunipa half. So you understand. Oh, so that's okay. why I I prefer payment prior, even oh, before no. I start my work. Professionalism, yes. definitely. So there, there it is, guys. Uh, makeup by Kevo. Uh, he's an amazing uh, makeup artist. So it's all a matter of makeup artistry. So make sure you follow him across all his social media platform. That is on Instagram is at Kelvin Trevor. All right. On Facebook page is Makeup Glam by Kevo. Okay. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank High you five. so much. Yes, there it is. You. So, guys, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, Barry Mo and I will be coming up to sample your comments on our Facebook page. We're asking how exactly are you finding, uh, you know, the aspect of just working at home. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social media platforms. Don't touch that, doll. Uh, we'll be coming back. <laughs>